morning. Welcome to the House Republican press conference. Today is day 17. Um, with me today, I have Representative Eastman, Representative Pruitt, and Representative Chenault. Uh, we're here to take your questions. Um, our House Republicans have process through the subcommittee uh, meetings. They're uh, being very engaged, and we've been busy working on our budget amendments. Our members have introduced about 10 cost-saving measures um, that will help uh, provide uh, some relief to the state budget. So we're excited. The um, House Democrats have in, in told us that they will be hearing our legislation and moving those good policies forward. So we're happy to hear that. Um, we look forward to having a good uh, debate about policies and budget items going forward. And uh, so thank you all for being here. And with that, Representative Chenault. Thank you, Sharice. Uh, you know, we're three weeks into the session. Uh, we passed uh, one resolution yesterday. Uh, you know, we're working on progress. Uh, you know, we're still trying to fill out the uh, subcommittee budget process and, and what effects any changes there have on uh, any of our members and, and their opportunity to participate in the process. We'll continue to work on that. Uh, Continue to work on uh, individual bills that uh, we deem will be important to the state, and glad to be here. So, Madam Chairman. Thank you, um, Representative Pruitt. Yeah, thank you, Sharice. Uh, so, the, from the perspective, of course, from finance, uh, I'm actually really proud of the effort and the work that our members are, are putting into the budget process. They are uh, active at their subcommittees. Uh, we have been active uh, in our full finance, and uh, our, our people are ready to engage in coming up with, uh, uh, you know, meaningful solutions that we find will be uh, appropriate discussion points in this process. And then separately, uh, the other thing that I just kind of wanted to touch base on just real briefly is, I think it's fitting that it's February 2nd, you know, it's Marmot Day here, but it's Groundhog Day everywhere else. Because um, some of the things that we warned about last year in SB 91, I think we're, we're having to talk about this year, uh, we, they were warned. And so it's interesting that we're having the, a discussion again about some of these things, because we had talked about them last year. So uh, I'm ready to, to go back and address what we did. And it's time to fix some of these things. I think a lot of people recognize it's time to fix things. Because the two biggest things I heard when I was knocking on doors this year was the budget, which we're working on and crime and safety, and people want to feel safe in our homes. So um, with that. Thank you. Representative Eastman. Well, first, uh -huh. it's uh, a privilege to be serving in the legislature. And as a freshman, uh, I understand there's, there's an awful lot to learn. So for these last three weeks, uh, myself and my staff and other freshmen have been working hard to learn as much as we can, and that process will continue. Uh, currently, some of the priorities that I'm working on uh, deal with making sure that we have the uh, safe roads that we need in the Matsu Valley, where I represent. Um, not every part of the state is growing right now, but the Matsu certainly is. And when you have a growing population and you don't have roads to keep up with that, you end up with traffic accidents, and we're seeing far too many of those right now. So um, one of my goals is to make sure that we get those uh, improvements uh, prioritized and made as quickly as possible. Thank you. So uh, we're open for questions. If you could just uh, give your name and affiliation. Mallory Walser has our uh, microphone. We'd be like to hear from you. Steve. Who's here first? Uh, <coughs> Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. I've got a lot of tax questions for you folks. Starting with um, Representative Eastman, you talk about uh, your district growing and uh, needing infrastructure. And there is a motor fuels tax bill that was uh, heard in the House, and it's going to get heard in the other chamber today. Um, and there seems to be a lot of pushback on that bill um, from members of your caucus. So how do you reconcile that, that those <laughs> new taxes, if they are approved, um, are designed to go toward those roads that you're talking about? And yet there's a lot of pushback about whether those taxes should be uh, approved or not. Sure. Well, that's a, that's a fair question. Um, any tax question is, uh, is certainly a fair game at the moment. But one of the things that you know I'm looking at as a representative of the Matsu is that uh, when you're dealing with a tax that's a consumption tax on recreation, that's one thing. 
when you're dealing with uh, the Matsu, you know, we have 30,000 people who commute into Anchorage every day to work. And so by tripling the fuel tax, which I understand the governor is, is attempting to do, what you're doing is you are telling people you have the option of, of not consuming fuel and not going to work or of making it more expensive for them to do so. And I, in our current economy, I don't think we want to discourage them from working. So I would be opposed to that. Uh, and I understand you know, some number of, of the Matsu delegation would be as well. But that's not an issue on which the Republican caucus has a position right now. So that's a personal opinion. So how do you reckon with it? So how do you pay for those roads So in the case of, of paying for roads, that's uh, a very high priority for me personally. Uh, public safety is, is, you know, perhaps arguably higher in, in that respect. But, uh, but my priorities when it comes to a state budget are things like roads and public safety and law enforcement. And if we're not meeting those priorities first, then there's a whole lot of other things the state's currently paying for that I don't think we should because they're not as high a priority. Austin Baird from KTU. Uh, I guess uh, outside of the regular legislative session, uh, do you believe that lawmakers should continue to draw per diem given the cost that that racked up last year? And if so, why? Thank you, Austin, for the question. I think that's a, that's a debate that we've been having since uh, we've been collecting per diem. We're a citizen legislature. Uh, should we have the opportunity to have per diem during session? We have uh, two costs. We have a cost of maintaining our home in our home city, and we also have the cost of maintaining uh, residents here in Juneau. Um, I heard the House Democrats comment that you shouldn't be taking per diem when you're sleeping in your own bed, and I, I agree with that. I think we have three legislators that are Juneau based that have historically been collecting per diem in their own beds at a reduced rate for. Or, you know, since per diem started, I think it's a it's a discussion we should have. I think it's an appropriate discussion, and uh, as we go forward, we'll we'll talk about that and see where people line up. But there's got to be some compensation when we are continuing to maintain two households. Anybody else? I don't mind answering. Go ahead. I'll answer. The, Walt Disney said that everyone needs deadlines, and part of the problem is is that law makers for years don't care about the 90-day deadlines. And I think there, something has to be in, whether it's per diem or we have a constitutional amendment that says it's 90 days, that we have something that's more, that's a stronger statement. We've got to get our job done in time. That, that was another thing I heard knocking on doors. It was consistent. You guys did not do your job in time. And so if we don't put some, it either, we're going to have to police ourselves on this thing. So I, I'm willing to any kind of conversation. I really think a constitutional amendment to make it 90 days is probably a good one. And then we have to, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile the, the special sessions beyond that? I, I, I'm not 100% sure that I can fully answer that at this point in time. But I will tell you, we need deadlines. And if we're not willing to give deadlines, I think the public will give us a deadline because a lot of us might not find ourselves back here. Okay. Um, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. I have a follow-up and then a, a separate question. Um, my follow-up is, what do you guys think about the idea that um, legislators' pay should just be more sort of less complicated and more transparent and maybe giving yourselves a raise and taking away the per diem um, because the per diem just seems to be sort of a constant source of controversy and confusion and I think by, by most people's measures the fifty thousand dollars you guys uh make a year in salary is not sort of a particularly large amount for especially if like you have a family or something like that yeah thanks that's a good question i think that's kind of been the dialogue um that we've heard you know throughout the history of having a citizen legislature it's versus having a professional legislature. The citizen legislature that's set up is an opportunity for us with business experience to sit before the state and make business decisions for the state of Alaska. I think that's crucial in how we run the state of Alaska. We need folks that um, are everyday Alaskans that um, have made a paycheck, that have worked hard, have owned small businesses. That's, I think, the foundation of what Alaskans are all about. Uh, should we have a conversation about a professional legislature and a, and a citizen legislature? Uh, I think right now, I think we're 
perfectly positioned with the, the group of people that we have. The House Republicans have a very pro-business. We've all had private sector jobs. Uh, we bring that dynamic to the state, and it, it, it's very valuable. Anybody else? Um, my my other question was um, just simply: uh, Have you guys thought about um, the legislature's budget, and have you guys identified areas where you'd like to see uh, trimming of the legislature's budget in this coming budget year? You know, Nat, I think that uh, we look at our budget all the time. I think there probably are some places to look uh, and and trim that budget. Uh, you know, I, I I give you an example. I not because I'm in uh, the Republican House now, but I, uh, from my previous position uh, last year, I uh, got rid of uh, two of my employees. And, uh, you know, you just have to try to cut back where you can and try to make those, uh, make those differences. Are there things that the legislature can probably cut out of their budget? Yeah. Uh, I think that the uh, House majority has has tried to curtail some of the uh, pay ranges of employees. Uh, I think they said that in their press conference, and uh, you know we've certainly seen that since uh, we're in the position that we're in. But uh, uh, as long as everyone's playing by the same rules, then I think we're okay. Uh, you know there may be some things uh, we've uh, tried to. Uh, well, last year we, we had a five-day furlough program for employees of the legislature. Most of those people uh, met those requirements, but I believe a lot of them didn't. And it was just because it wasn't forced on them. Uh, it does affect their paychecks, and, and naturally we don't like to see our employees hurt either, but uh, we're in different times today and we need to make uh, adjustments accordingly. You know, the legislature's budget actually paid for this building, if you want to know, the 38 or $36 million that it costs to refurbish this building that we're sitting in today actually came out of uh, the legislature's budget. So there may be some ways to save some money there. And I, I think that's a fair question. I think we should be looking at every budget. There's nothing that's going to be held harmless. Um, I actually sent a letter uh, yesterday to Representative Ledoux talking about the lounge, something that you've reported on extensively, uh, and, and talked about the state office building has a, a process over there with their, uh, their snack shack where they've leased it out and it's actually making money. Uh, they lease it out to some folks that are doing voc rehab. I mean, those are great opportunities that we have. Uh, we don't have to do business like we've always done business, and we can't. So coming up with some innovative ideas, that's what the House Republicans are all about, is looking for those innovative ways that we can save the state money, whether it's our budget, the governor's budget, or the department, department budgets. That's, that's what we're here to do. That's what our focus is. And just to, to add to that, um, you know, we push other departments to, to move and use, utilize technology to save money. And sometimes we've been the slowest to do some of that. I mean, I've been pretty vocal, so I'm not, it's not something new, but I, the fact that I sit in finance and still have to have, they, I'm only allowed to have things printed out for me every day and can't use the state iPad that says House Finance engraved on the back in the House Finance Committee drives costs. And, and you should go over and you should look at, at, at our print shop and look at the huge room full of paper that is only one month's supply. And at a certain point in time, we need to ask ourselves if we're going to push everyone else to utilize technology, 